Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Oops. Uh, welcome back to Quake. I've got very bisexual lighting on, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, my ring light does not include any instructions. <laughs> you just kind of have to figure it out. Wow. All right, cool. Man, I feel like I have no idea what the hell these things are, but the fact that they're clearly like torsos, because like, look at them, that's clearly a spine. And when you look at them from the front, you can also very clearly see that they have, um, like a rib cage and, uh, they look like an emaciated, like, human man. It's a lot more in the way of, like, it's a lot more in the way of, um, like, tutorial and explanation this time around? Yeah! So apparently in the official strategy guide for this... And by the way, this is the final weapon. There isn't another one after it. Unfortunate, but I guess it makes sense. There really is only one BFG uh, 9000. Let me talk about these lights for a second, but not while looking at them. For whatever reason, they like love to do those lights, I guess because like they think they look scary. Jesus. Uh, but like they have always just hurt my eyes and I think that they look like shit and should never have been implemented. I don't think they've ever looked good. It's probably supposed to land right in the water, huh? Ah, well. So this is one of those things that is, uh... we. Yeah, you can get a lot more across in Quake because you can just push it on the screen and have... You know, have things be written out like clearly, plainly, and easily understandably. And you know what? That's good. That's great, in fact. Alright, time to date the episode. So, I've, I've been going... I've never really liked Warhammer 40k. I think that it steals from Frank Herbert's Dune. Uh, and J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium. Without much actual consideration as to, like, what either of those mean. And I've always thought that they should get sued. Uh, but this year, in... Well, there are other things. I just like how, like... I, I just like the design of the normal Space Marines. I just like how everything in the universe kind of caters to making those Space Marines. Um, at some point... Ugh. Gonna load that again, but... That is a awful noise, my fans. Anyway, yeah, suffice it to say, a lot of misgivings about Warhammer. I think it has a lot of problems. But one of the things about Warhammer was that it was supposed to be like a parody. 
But now that has gotten completely lost. Like, back in the day, like... Orc party members were named after... Members of President, uh, American President Ronald Reagan's cabinet. But now, like, orcs are meant to be taken completely seriously. And, like, yeah, it just straight up lost any sense of satire or parody to it. To the point that, like, a lot of fans don't even know that it used to be there. And I only recently found out because an older fan told me. That's fun. Uh, and they've recently had to, like... I say had to, but... They've quote-unquote had to uh, copyright strike a bunch of, like, YouTube fan projects for 40k. Shambler! Wow, that lightning gun is for real. That's a problem solver if ever I've seen one. Uh, there are some copyright laws wherein they need to... They actually need to enforce a trademark or else they run the risk of losing it. Uh, and so they've recently copyright stricken a whole bunch of fan projects. Now, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for this. Like, for example, 40k has only one setting, unlike Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, you can't do the sort of things in D&D that you can in 40k. And vice versa. Because there is a canon, you know, there's one canon. There's some things in 40k where it's like... Well, I guess there's some things in D&D where it's like... This isn't fit with the Forgotten Realms canon, but since it was al always assumed that no matter what... Oh, wow. Cool. It was always assumed in Forgotten Realms canon that... Well, in D&D canon, that no matter what you did, you know, you were creating your own new alternate universe. Cool. <laughs> That's fun. It's actually like a live shot of the uh, thing in question. That's a really cool thing for the end of level screen. The I think these are things in Doom as well. Those faces. Let's actually look at my surroundings here. Anyway, yeah. So like... They have quote unquote had to enforce their trademarks. Ring of Shadow. Oh, I'm invisible. Oh, gross. Look at my helmet. I just have eyes left. Which actually does make sense because if you were invisible, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Because your eyes would be invisible too, and so they couldn't absorb light. And the nature of invisibility is that you can't absorb light. At least that's the theory. So yeah, I guess you would have to leave your eyes visible. But boy, is that a... Oh, fuck. It's one of those long, leggy boys. Damn. One for one to make sure and one to grow, you know? Anyway, so, um, even if I were to get into 40k, like, because I, I was thinking about it earlier because of COVID, you know, I'll have, I would have had time to get into 40k, but like, boy, if this was, if, if God ever wanted to give me a sign to not do something, this would be it. Like, Games Workshop, the company who 
runs it all. Just like, yeah, we're going to enforce our trademarks, even though we haven't done so for the past couple of years. Like, mid-quarantine when a bunch of fans have nothing to do but make um, fan projects for 40k. We're going to now uh, choose to enforce our stuff, send lawsuits and cease and desists. And some people have not actually been issued ceases and desists. But because of the unclear way that the rules are written, they don't know that they won't be. And so they just want to play it safe. Peekaboo. They just want to play it safe to avoid you know, risking their livelihood or channel. And like, the fucking nerve of, you know, your quote-unquote trademark. Like, Warhammer 40k especially, but Warhammer in general is not like a real property. It is a Frankenstein of, like, Frank Herbert's Dune, Dungeons and Dragons, D&D, chess. Oh god, oh god. Okay. <laughs> Fucking. There's some corny shit. Oh yeah, apparently th these things are called like vores or something. Is he dabbing? Oh, uh, how I missed you, the teleporting keycard squad. It's just a thing, specifically in id Software games, but in a lot of games besides. Uh, where like, oh, you picked up a key card? Here come the guys! And somehow they just know that you picked up the key card, you know? Through magic, I mean, I guess in this setting that makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, I got interrupted earlier, but uh, apparently the official, like, guide for Quake advises you to use the same technique with the lightning gun that you would watering your lawn. So just, like, just lay it down and get it everywhere. And that's just so, that's so funny. Like, it's not as though these games have a lot of writing. But the little that they do is so good every time. I think these are called Dark Knights or Death Knights or something. Expounding on my discussion of armor last episode... Hey, fuck off. It looks as though they've just given more, like, increments of armor. So there's now an armor pickup for 50 and 150. In addition to the 100 and uh, 200. Okay, so the cast iron, like, texture makes me think that this could turn into an elevator and get lowered down. It's a weird segue that I've just... My brain's just come to, but, like, I haven't seen a new episode of Sesame Street in a while. There's this thing that I absolutely adore. Where people who are who are... <laughs> they're like rich and famous and powerful and they have a lot of money and stocks and shit. But like, the second that they appear on Sesame Street, that's how they know that they've really got it made, you know?
Oh boy. The last episode I watched of Sesame Street was the one where Ian McKellen was on. It's great. They let the man make jokes about how how uh, how he was Gandalf in Magneto, which is just fantastic. Okay. Yep, knew it. God, that armor they showed me is just teasing me, huh? I know I was just standing there taking it, and that's not how you're really supposed to play this game, but... Jesus! Damn it, I ran so far. I ran so far away. Oh god. Okay. And the things that you do to survive a firefight in this game. Oh, and you're not even alive, you're dead. Ha ha! Fool. Uh, I don't think I get credit for that kill, though. A lot of doors that could be opening. Man. They teased me earlier with that yellow armor. Generic tiger growl somewhere. Yeah, this stuff. Hmm. I really want that, man. No idea how to get it. You know, I'm starting to be able to recognize Trent's voice in here. Well, that's good, at least. Uh, I've also seen conflicting reports. Some people say Nine Inch Nails did the music. Some people say it's just Trent Reznor, but since he's the front man, how could you tell the difference anyway? The difference, of course, is that, like... Him doing the soundtrack all by himself is slightly more impressive and cool. The fact that he's also Ranger is just plain damn funny. The, the weird, like, breath noises that these things make is just so creepy. Oh, jeez. Oh, fuck. I should have saved. I was looking right at it, and I was like, this is dangerous. I should save. Oh my god, I have no idea where I am. Oh my god. I've loaded a save in another level. Oh my god, I, I didn't save that whole level. Oh my god, I have to do the whole thing.
Okay. I can't believe I didn't save. The end was literally in front of me. I was looking directly at it. Ugh. The gurgling noise that he made was really gnarly. Red armor. Take me. Okay. Oh my god, my rhythm is entirely shot. Let's party. So is this just like the Tolkien ring? Oh, I've just got a brilliant idea. Things are so fucked up. And also, now that I think of them, they ripped off that design. Not the id tech guys. But this design has been ripped off. The Voltagor in uh, Gearbox's opposing force expansion for Half-Life 1 looks just like that thing. Alright. I've got an idea. Okay. Okay. Now I could actually... Chambers of Torment is right, my mans. So something about, um, it's still homes. So something about invisibility in Doom is that because of the way that enemies aim, sometimes turning invisible is actually really bad for you. Because now the enemies are guessing, and so you can't dodge as effectively. So now you can't dodge as effectively. Look at that. Anyway. Can't dodge as effectively. Makes it a lot harder on you. All right, come on back. Oh, this is getting hairy. Jesus. 
I'm not sure if my plan worked. Let's try to get him to infight. Infighting seems to have been nerfed in this game, and you know what? I guess that makes perfect sense. Considering how, like, fucking great it is. Like, it's a good, useful way to save ammo. To, like, divide and conquer. You make your enemies work for you, you know? I guess the, the legions of Troop Nagurath are a little more uh, cohesive. Which, I, I guess, makes sense in story as well. Because with demons... You know, demons are all demons. So they're all, you know, as dumb as the next one. But with these guys, these are more of an army, you know? Man. Oh, cool. Somebody got him. Okay. Maybe they have less health, but they're like explosion resistant. There are some monsters or enemies like that. Sorry, I'm just focusing in hardcore on this duel. Nice. Damn. I don't suppose I could ask any of you to go easy on me, huh? Well, actually, I could set it to easy mode, but... I think that would re uh, revolve involve uh, resetting the entire game's difficulty, which... That'll be a lot of... That's a lot of... That's, uh, huh. A what area? Sorry, I just shot that thing. I don't know what it did. No. I was hoping. So tenderly do I crave that armor. Oh yeah, something kind of annoying. Uh, all of the... Uh, all the songs in this are just like called like track one, track two, etc. Compared to the Doom soundtrack, which I believe does have names for everything.
The nice thing about getting these two stuck together is that I can potentially... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Alright, I don't know if that was worth the saved... Okay. Man, three direct hits, huh? a good idea. Yes, I think I have a very good idea. Go away! God. Grenades just chasing you. Alright, I've got one. I got two. I'm so smart and handsome. All right. I remembered you. You son of a bitch. And then that guy's still stuck down there. What a schmuck. I wonder if there really are, like, things in the real world. Maybe not the real world, but... I wonder what the logic is, rather, of... things that, uh, take... like, four rockets to kill, but can also be killed in a, a whole bunch of nails, you know? Maybe it's the nails that are special. Though also the, uh... The large shotgun does seem to do, uh, its work as well. You know, something I will say, um... Removing the, like, reload animation of the, uh... Damn it. So I'm gonna have a good neutral save. Removing the like reload animation of the shotgun, I feel makes it lose something. Bro, you gotta go. I don't know why I was using the regular one and not the big one. I left one alive. One vor down there, I should say. The charred viscera of diabolic horrors bubble viscously as you seize the rune of hell magic. Hell magic. See, when you said earth magic, my assumption was like, oh, we're going to have, like, the four classical elements. But I guess maybe it's more of, like, like, how there are different worlds, like, earth realm and the nether realm, like, in Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, Quake, and, and Nine Inch Nails. That's what a teen in the 90s is into. Anyway. Its heat scorches your hand. Its terrible secrets blight your mind. Sh gathering the shreds of your courage... You shake the devil's shackles from your soul. That's radical. That's fucking rad. And become ever more hard... Hard and determined to destroy the hideous creatures whose mere existence threatens the souls and psyches of all the population of Earth. Alright, wow. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Next time we will start... The Elder World. Wow. Uh, and then I assume there's going to be, like, a last boss level afterwards. 
Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. I have an outfit that's been Quake. Uh, we're coming through this at like a really good pace, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.